Well, hello everybody. This is a 1982 Miss Pac-Man arcade machine. I picked this up in 2005 for 200 bucks off eBay. It had a glitch on it. There was no shipping. You had to handle everything on your end, so no bidders. This came out of Northern California. It uh, cost me a little bit to get it here, so I probably have seven or eight hundred bucks to get it to my door at that time. I had a friend that was in the shipping business, so he helped me out with that. But, point being, it's on right now, but no monitor, no picture image as you can see. I was actually getting ready to pull the board sets and all the sensitive components out of it so I could store the cabinet and get it out of my shop and keep the sensitive components in climate control. So I was going to give it one last hoorah and play it. Hasn't been on for years, but she no go. I've got, uh, let's see if I can get a credit in it here. You can see it's clearly on. Go ahead and turn it off. It does have a speed chip in it, so it's pretty challenging and fun to play. So let's try to figure out what's wrong with this thing. All right, well, I've got the back opened up here. It's unplugged from the wall. Uh, this is an Electro Home GO7-CBO monitor. That's just for reference. It's got a May 1982 date code on it. First and foremost, this is not a how-to video. This is just what I've got going on. Uh, I used to actually know a lot more about these things back in 2005 I've seemed to have forgotten about 99 percent of what I knew and I'll explain that as I move along I've already been in here and probed around a little bit but if you do not know what you're doing do not stick your hand in here at all uh, just for reference this anode wire right here where it has that cup on the top of it uh, that can store 18 20 thousand volts you do not want to let that connect with you and that's where I'm going to start is by discharging this anode right here and you can see I have an old screwdriver with a wire that is soldered to it and an alligator clip on the other end I'm going to put that on the chassis right here as a ground source and I'm going to take this only holding on to the very end of that screwdriver and I'm going to slide it underneath there and touch the contact. And if there's any juice in this, then it will snap to ground. So I'll come in here. And... Okay, I'm getting nothing, no snap. I kind of speculated that the flyback is not outputting anyway, but do that. So now I'm having to work around the camera and I've got a halogen light in here with me. I'm going to try to get this out of there there we go you can see how it's kind of clipped in all right bear with me it's extremely difficult to light get the camera in here and still yet do the work but I'll do my best do you see this huge filter capacitor right here this gray one right there at the base of it you can just almost pick it up that's a 1.25 amp fuse on the circuit board that's F901 I believe if that fuse is blown this capacitor will still retain a charge it will not dissipate over time to ground because it loses its path to ground to discharge itself so there will be a lot of voltage in this ask me how I know a couple of nights ago I got in here with my probes to check that fuse and I got continuity, which told me the fuse was not blown. But it was making a circular path somehow through the circuitry. That fuse, in essence, was blown. I probed it. I came back in. I couldn't quite see if it was blown getting my head in there. So I stuck my finger in there to wipe the dust off. And it just gave me a jolt. Somehow I grounded between my finger and my elbow somewhere so that's as far as the current went but buyer beware be very careful so that fuse is popped this should have voltage in it 
and I'm going to try to get in there and discharge it before I pull the chassis out. Oh, very scary. I'm using the same uh, tool. I can't show it in front of the camera. I'm going to try to sneak in behind the neck of this monitor. I do not know which side is which, but I'm expecting to hear a pop. The other, the other end of the lead is on ground. Did you hear that? Man, that was loud. And it's trying to build up a residual charge. Maybe you saw that spark. That's what hit me a couple nights ago. Like I said, I'm rusty on this stuff. And man, it hurt. Okay, so it's the top edge. The top side is the one I just shorted to ground and discharged that capacitor. All right, I'm going to start disconnecting some of the wiring. I believe this is the signal stuff here and here. These are keyed, so they can only go one direction, so no need to mark anything there. Um, let's see. I don't know if you can see those yet, so I'll try to find something else. Uh, this little section right here is from the neck board I believe yeah I'm gonna go ahead and pull it off anyway even though the neck board is gonna come out with this all right well these two wires right here for the degaussing coil and I've put a piece of tape on this one that says top I don't think polarity matters here but just in the event that it does uh, that will allow me to put them back in the order in which they came from Okay, well this connector right up in here, I'm going to get it out of the way, and it is spaced terminally wise, terminal wise, so it can only go in one direction. I think, oh there's one last thing right here, that is the 120 voltage that goes up to the monitor chassis so I'm just going to unplug that I believe we're down to the neck board all right we're down to the neck board this protective cover here it's got a slot in it where it's ripped out I'll have to fix that later it's just to keep keep you from getting shocked if you accidentally touch that when you're in here working but in terms of these necks right here they're super fragile so be very careful around there don't bump it or anything but I'm just gonna grab the edges of the board and four points and just slowly start rocking and wiggling to pull this neck board off gentle and there we go and then one wire right here this black wire is a ground it's connected to a ground strap around the monitor itself the tube the CRT so I've got that out, I've got this out. Let me try to get this out of the way. Okay, I believe we are ready. Okay, well my objective here is just to pull the chassis out and leave the tube and everything in there, which is why I'm going this direction. I've got two screws I need to remove. One of them's right here and there's one identical to it on the back side. So I'm going to try to fish under here. I can just see it through a slot. There's one of them. They're just sheet metal screws. And now I can do this one here. But while doing it, I'm going to support the chassis. Should just slide right out, avoiding the neck of that tube. Now I'd mentioned that when I probed this, got my meter on, when I probed this across here I had continuity and now I do not. So that tells me that something in all the wiring that was removed 
is now not a non-issue. But if you're trying to test that with the machine sitting there, uh, you may have a continuity reading like I did, even though that fuse was blown. All right, well, I have a 81 Galaga machine as well as this Miss Pac-Man, and it's hard to keep the two straightened out on what I've done to what, but I can see that I had done a cap kit on this and replaced all the capacitors at some point. I'm assuming back in 05. Let me flip this over. Yeah, this is definitely my work. I can see it. Uh, I'm kind of disappointed in my work for that matter. I did not clean the flux off after I installed all these caps. I should have done that. I'll clean that up and we'll make this pretty again and do it right. Alright, well tucked in my original manual, the schematics and whatnot, I had this chart in there. This is something I found on the internet years ago. Uh, just do a search for Electrohome G07 troubleshooting chart or something like that and you should be able to find this but starting here got a blank screen yes and F901 is blown and it says shorted horizontal output transistor X01 test with a diode check or ohm setting of your meter ground the black meter lead to the chassis and touch the red lead to the metal case of the transistor. Open or high resistance is good, shorted when bad. Test when power off. And then over here in this box it says bad high voltage unit, the flyback transformer. Look carefully, you'll probably see a crack in it and it might be burned as well. My physical inspection at least at this dusty stage, dirty stage of the flyback, I don't see any cracks. There's no ooze coming out or anything like that. But it's my understanding if there is a short in this flyback, it's going to take out this X01 transistor right here that's mounted to the side, as well as that fuse I'd referenced in the beginning. So one, two of these components are bad and it took out this fuse. Either or or both. My understanding is the flyback will take this out and then in turn pop the fuse, but who knows. I look online and I see a lot of flybacks that are literally cracked and it's got garbage running out of it, but mine looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and order a new flyback, this transistor, and a replacement fuse. Do all three and see where we're at. I'm also going to include the horizontal width coil, which is right here. This has been heated up, whatever, broken over time. Just because it's broken like this does not mean it's bad. The coil, in essence, is still good, but if I'm going to order parts, I might as well replace that as well. All right, well, I've gone ahead and ordered some parts from ArcadePartsAndRepair.com. It's been a couple days. I don't know when they're going to get here, but I ordered two flyback transformers. I think they were 30 bucks a piece, maybe 6 or $7 for the X01 transistor. Two of those, two width coils, I think they were around 13 13 50 a piece. A five pack of this 1.25 amp fuse. Now this fuse is actually leaded. It's actually soldered to the board. I ordered standard fuses. It was like five bucks. And then they sell clip kits that you can install on these boards so you can remove and replace the fuses a lot easier. I went ahead and ordered four sets of those. Two for here and two down for here if I ever change this fuse reason I ordered two of everything is because I have two machines. Like I said, I have a Galaga. So I'll have some spare parts to fix that or this in the future when needed. I am getting ready to remove these components off the board so I can clean it and just have everything ready for when the parts get here. But once I replace everything, you need to check the B plus voltage and make sure it's at 120 volts. 
And to do that, the test point is right here on this large resistor where this white wire connects. One lead will go there, one lead will go to the chassis ground and check it for 120 volts. If it's high or low, this is the pot, the potentiometer right here that you turn to adjust that voltage. That will be done with it back in the cabinet. I've elected to show those points now so it would be easier for everyone to see exactly what I was referring to when we get there. All right, well, I'm going to start by removing the flyback transformer. That will open up the leads a little easier here for this X01 transistor. I had to cut a little adhesive off right here to get this boot out of the way. Hopefully this won't be too difficult. Okay, I've got that out. All right, well, I've got it flipped over, and just a word of warning. If you lean these over like this, you can break that horizontal width coil on your own accidentally. So prop it up or even just remove it before you do this work. These uh, solder joints don't look too healthy. Uh, but anyway, it's coming out. I believe there's only seven that hold it. I'm just going to do a couple here. Starting on number one, get some heat in that. Suck this off. And I'll work on these and get them all cleaned out and then we'll pull that fly back off. All right, I believe this is ready to come out there are actually eight spots. They're marked one to seven, and then it jumps over and it has 10 right here. Also, there are two screws that need to be removed. This is right here in front of my finger. Those two. So now this should just come right out. I sucked it off with my solder sucker originally and then came in with a solder braid. Got the rest of it out light wiggle you do not want to pull too hard on these things or you can actually break the board and there it is so there's the flyback all right well i've turned my attention to the horizontal width coil just to get it out of my way that might help gain access to that transistor a little bit easier so rinse and repeat i'm just going to remove all the solder from these legs there are four of them and get this thing pulled out of there. It's kind of hard to work the camera right over my head. So typically I use this solder sucker to remove the majority of the solder and then like I said I'll come back in with a a braid to remove anything else and that kind of minimizes how much braid you actually need to use to get these components loose that actually looks pretty good I've got one spot over here hanging on so I'll make sure I get this ready to come out there we go oh, it's it's already loose I'll just go ahead and take it all the way out. It's still kind of warm under my fingers, but let me flip this over. Oh, it just fell out. <laughs> okay, well, there's the width coil. You can see it clearly is broken at the base, but still good. There's a ferrite core in here that you put a tool in there, move it up and down this coil, and that's what changes your width on the screen. So this will become a backup backup drawer item okay well removing a couple of those items has kind of opened up this transistor right here this is one I'm gonna have to do without the camera rolling uh, it's just so tight in there this white wire that comes in I may be able to take that one off as we're sitting here should be just wound around it yeah so that one's out of the way but there's a little capacitor here 
that is connected to that leg where this thin orange wire comes in. That's the one I'm not going to be able to do on camera, I believe. Well, I was able to get that wire off. There's a little ferrite piece right there. I want to make sure that stays intact. I'm not sure about this one. Oh, well, I believe I might be able to. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, but I'm just heating up the solder where that leg is coiled around. Yeah, I got it off there. Okay. I was able to do that. Alright, this transistor is just simply held on with two screws from the outside. There will be a piece of mylar or some type of an insulator behind it. You definitely do not want to lose that or break it. And then there will be two ceramic inserts in the holes. Again, for isolation. So I'll get these out of here. And pay special note, take pictures, whatever. But see how these pins are offset to one side? You don't want to put this in backwards because you'll short that out to this case. You definitely want to make sure you get it in the proper way. There is that little piece of mylar I was speaking of right there. I'm just going to leave it on there for now. And then there will be two of these ceramic insulators that come back into these holes. When this goes back together, special attention needs to be applied to this area to ensure nothing is grounding where it should not. Okay, one small correction. There is that little piece of mylar I was speaking of, but there also appears to be like a silicone gasket right here. And it's kind of stuck down to the surface. So I'll see if I can carefully get in here and lift it up without tearing it or cutting it. Just being super careful. Taking my time. There we go. Alright, so there's that gasket right there. Alright, well now I'm working on F901, which is that fuse. It is this solder point here, and the one right here. And these four points here are where those board clips are going to be installed to hold the fuse in a holder. So I will remove the fuse fill those holes back up and open up these four in preparation for installing that. Camera's really close. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. Got one of them. I believe that was it might even have fallen out sure did okay there's the fuse I just took out you can see how it's leaded on the end it will not be when I'm finished now it's just a matter of opening up these holes there's an example I'll go ahead and just do them all camera is right. It's within six inches of where I'm working. That one opened up. Okay. Last one. Alright. Feel free to skip ahead or tune out, your choice. And then like I said, I'm just going to fill these holes right here. There's one. And two. Oops. There we go. 
All right, well, I got my parts in today. It only took a couple days to get here. I ordered them over the weekend, and they shipped out on Monday. It's now Wednesday, so just two days. But two of everything, like I'd said, with the exception of this capacitor, and we'll get to that in a moment. A couple flybacks, a couple of the high-output transformers. Now, this is a 2SD871. The originals that were in the machine are 2SD870. This is, a, according to my knowledge, a replacement part for one that is obsolete. And then this is the little fuse holder I was speaking of that we'll be soldering onto the board. A uh, five pack of the 1.25 fuses, a couple width coils, and this. Apparently when I did the original cap kit, I had not changed the capacitor on the neck board. So I said, well, I'll just go ahead and order one of those. So at the website, I found a cap that was 10 microfarad, 250 volts, but it was axial leaded, and I needed a radial. And right beside it, I just clicked add to cart, but I didn't read it. It was a 10 microfarad, 50 volt. So I ordered the wrong one accidentally. I went back out to their website, and they don't even have the 10 250 listed in a radial form. So it's just going to ride with what it's got. It's probably fine anyway or I'll source one out later. I don't know, I'm hoping that the parts I ordered are going to take care of my problem, but I'm kind of leery about it at this point. I'm going to start with the original flyback. This is it, all cleaned up. There's physically nothing wrong with this externally. Now, potentially it could have some shorted windings on the inside, and it took out that fuse and protected itself before it got to the point where it would bulge and blow out and lose its ooze uh, but like I'd said this is I'm not confident that this is even bad despite its age moving on to the high output transistor I checked this in circuit with just an article I'd found on the on the web and I did not get the results that they got however when I pull it out and I check it on the bench I believe it's fine and we'll do a comparison to the new one on this part right here momentarily all right check this out here's the original part right here I'm gonna go one for one back and forth on these and we're gonna see what we get I really think this is a good part you guys tell me so I've got the negative on the collector which is the case itself and then I'm gonna go to pin 2 which is the emitter right here 0.454 volts. I'm in the diode function on my meter. 0.452 volts. Okay. Let me go ahead and re reverse the leads. There's a diode in here and we should get nothing. And we do not. And we come this direction. And we do not. Now we'll go from the collector to the base pin, which is pin number one on the right. 4.37 compared to a new one 4.5 a little bit different but still fine do the same thing I'll reverse the leads nothing and nothing now I'm gonna go to the ohms function this has an internal resistor in it that is 50 ohms so I'm gonna bridge these two pins right here and see what we get 47 ohms almost 48 and then I'll do the same thing here 47 ohms all right well while I was waiting for parts I decided to kind of pin out the actual flyback on how it's made internally this is a drawing of the flyback from the schematic so I've labeled out and discovered which all the pins are you can see how they're all labeled and then right here off pin 2 it'll go through a diode and then out to the white wire and then it will continue on through another couple of diodes and then there's your high voltage red lead right there this is a physical representation of the flyback looking at it from the bottom these are the pins all eight of them 
and then internally here the red wire the white wire so pin 1 connects to pin 3 you can see it right here 4 to 5 through the windings 6 to 7 7 to 10 and 6 to 10 which is on the outside right here from that I've just taken some measurements here's my old one right here and then the new one here on this side I just filled this in today but this is what I got 3.3 ohms a tenth etc etc on these they're very close they're dead on across the top ones uh, let's see 1.4 ohms on the old between 10 and 7 and 1 ohm between 10 and 7 on the new one 0 0.3 0 0.3 1.5 and 1 so they are really close to each other I'm going to show how I did just a bench test on uh, these pins right here because they are the ones that do have the diodes in them and the diode function on my meter doesn't have enough output to actually get past these in the voltage. All right, well, I watched a pretty cool video on YouTube on someone that was figuring out the pinouts of a flyback. And this is the setup he used to test the secondary winding because of those diodes that are in there. So what I've got are two 9-volt batteries right here. The negative lead is connected to the negative lead of my meter. The positive right here currently is connected to the high voltage output red lead. And then from the positive lead of the battery, I've got this green right here. So I'm going to go on DC voltage right here. And I'm going to touch pin 2 which is this one right here and you can see I'm getting 3.6 volts through that and I've made a note right here 3.64 this is the old flyback and then touching this red wire I'm sorry the white wire right here I'm getting 7.5 volts white to red 7.55 now I'm gonna take this red one off here and put it on this white wire and connect to two and I've got 12.6 volts these batteries are probably low or they're stripping some voltage out of there so anyway I've got that mapped out that's how I checked those now let's take for example we know there's a diode in here this is not anything he showed it's just something I did so we've got 12.66 volts showing here if I reverse the leads on this and change its polarity, we should see little to no voltage on that meter. See how it's 0 0.05. And then if I switch this over to here and do the same thing, no voltage. And now we're passing voltage. So the diodes, at least at this lower voltage, appear to be working. Now that doesn't necessarily mean this flyback is not bad. It's just bench testing it like this, at this way, indicates that it is still good. Now it may have some internal leakage when the high voltage, it may be jumping out somewhere to ground, who knows, but... I'm just throwing things out here on things that I've done to try to figure out what's going on with this machine. So we're going to stick in some new parts and see what happens. Well, I've taken a moment to just go ahead and pull out this transistor on the other side to bench check it. We're going to do this together in real time. I've made some notes here just so I can keep things straight in my head. All right, starting with step number one, we're going to put the positive on the base and the negative on the emitter. And we should get between 0.45 and 0.9, and we do, so that's good. Now we're going to leave that or put the positive on the base and the negative on the collector. And we're getting 0.49, so that's within range, that's good. And now we're going to put the positive on the emitter. 
and the negative on the base and we should show over limit and we do number four is the positive on the collector and the negative on the base and we should get over limit and that's checking out good positive on the collector and negative on the emitter on step five we should get over limit that's good now we swap these two leads and we're getting over limit so according to what I've just done this is checking out good alright well I've got that transistor installed I'm gonna start with this little fuse here you can see I've popped the clips on the end of one of them there's a lot of play in the slot down there so I want to make sure I get the spacing just right try to get this down in that hole there it goes all right so what I'm going to do is flip this over and we're lined up right here I'm gonna just tack those in because I don't want to apply too much heat to that fuse then I'm going to pop the fuse out and then I'll finish soldering side to side so just a little tack just a little tack I don't think it's up in there all the way no it's not try to get my finger under here I can find it there we go I'm gonna try to warm this side up yeah there we go I'll tack the bottom. Just a tack. All right. Sorry about all the moving around there. Where is that fuse? There it is. All right. So I'm going to get in here and try to pop it out. Come on. There. All right. Flip this back over. I'm trying to keep the camera close so you can really see what's going on. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is just finish one side and hope nothing moves. I'll let that cure cure and then I'll jump down here and then I'll jump back up to this side and then finally this last one right here all right okay let's get this new transistor installed I can see which way this came off there's a little indention right there match it up with this one that piece of mylar is on here as well the offset to these legs they're closer to this hole that goes down but before I put that in there I need to go ahead and get these I thought they were ceramic these are in essence are plastic but these insulators in those two holes this is kind of a thing where lots of fingers would be helpful but I'm going to use this bracket on the back side just to hold it there. Now I will put this up here and start in a screw. And I'm going to let the screw hopefully find that hole. I'm going to push it all the way in with the screwdriver if I can get on it. There we go. And just start trying to find that hole. There it is. Just lightly tightened. And then I'll try to put the bottom one in. Do the same thing to that. Just lightly bringing it up. Okay. 
Now I need to make sure those insulators are down in the holes, and they are. Everything's looking good. Final tightening of these two screws. And we're ready to move on. All right, well, I've got that little piece of ferrite put on this orange wire, as well as have the this capacitor hooked up again. I'm going to go ahead and try to solder this one. That camera is super close to me. I'm trying to sneak in from the back if I can. I have to come around the front. Okay, there's that connection. I think I said originally that this wire was white. It's not. It's yellow after I cleaned it up. I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way. Let's try to get this one on there. Try to pinch that just a little bit if I can. That camera is right on my shoulder in my face, so it's difficult to get in here. There we go. Get this one soldered on real quick. It slid down on me. I want it up a little bit. Right there. Looks good. Making sure that none of these connections are anywhere close to each other or the case. That looks good. All right, let's install the flyback. This white wire will actually fish up through this hole right here. Pull that in. Get it lined up the way it's going to sit. Try to carefully get it down in there. Doesn't get any easier than that. It's a little far away. I can see a gap in there where those screws go in. See that little gap? I'm going to go ahead and start those screws and see what it feels like. Just taking them up lightly right now. The dimensions may be a little bit different than the old one. But I'd I want to get the screws in first so I don't stress the solder joints look at this and see what happens well it worked okay Alright, just uh, eight connections here on this end, then we'll flip it back over and do the white wire on the top. Everything looks good here. I'll just start with number 10. And just work my way around. I'll get the rest of these finished and flip it back over. Alright, this white wire is actually a little too long, but I'm not going to cut it. I'm just going to make a service loop in here and tuck it down like that so it'll be clean and tidy. Get my boot on here first. Get through the hole. go get 
to solder it on. Try to get it coming straight out. There we go. Put the boot back up. And that's the flyback. All right, let's get the horizontal width coil installed. You can see the coil right here where these leads are attached. Down on the board between these two points, it may be hard to see, but there is a coil designation right there. That's the direction in which this will go. So I'll try to get it down in there, just like so. Now I'm going to flip it over. Hopefully that will stay. But I'm not going to let it rest. I'm going to use a pill bottle under this corner of the board. So we are right here. Make sure it's sticking straight up off the board. That looks good. It's just a matter of soldering it in. Start with this leg. And then I'll jump to this corner over here. Go back to this one. Finally, the last corner. I believe that's all the components. I'll take some time and use some alcohol, rubbing alcohol, and clean the flux off of this, and we'll stick it back in the machine. Flux is all cleaned up. I've also gone over the entire board and looked for any cold or broken solder joints. Paying special attention to the header pins, where the headers are on the other side. Uh, all mine look good, so apparently I may have reflowed these at that point in time. I've also done the same thing on the neck board. Looked at every joint. Didn't really see anything there either. Alright guys, well I've got it reinstalled. There was no sense in showing that part. It's just a reverse of taking it out. You can see that red alligator clip in there that lead I just moved. It's connected to that big ceramic resistor on the top side and there's a white wire to it. That's where I'm probing as a test point to check if I have 120 volts DC. The ground lead is connected to the chassis itself and I've got both of those test leads hooked up to my meter. Alright guys, well I've got the meter turned on. We're getting ready to hit the power. This is always the scary part, so let's see what happens. There we go. Look at that, 119.9. I hear static. Don't have an image yet can't see if the neck's glowing. I've got a light in there, but I definitely have B+. 119.6 should be 120. I'll try to get that spot on the money. Let's see if the tube is warmed up. Okay, I am getting an image, but it's uh it's all crazy. I'll show that real quick. All right, well, here's what we've got. I can certainly tell the horizontal width coil needs to be adjusted. It's not filling up the screen. But there's a horizontal frequency adjustment back on that chassis. I'm going to go back. I can just barely see up through here. I'm going to turn that and see if we can straighten this out or see what it does.
Okay, here we go. Something's happening. I, I can't tell, but I think we have an image. Yep, we sure do. Check that out. Yeah, the width is wrong. It looks like I need to change the height. It's not centered. So I'll have to play with those adjustments to get this where it needs to be, but we're getting somewhere. The adjustment for the horizontal frequency is done right here. That's what I turned in order to get that picture to come in. I also read in the manual for checking the B plus voltage, you should remove the input from the monitor, turn it on and let it sit for five minutes, and then take your reading and make your adjustment past that if required. So that's what I'm doing right now. All right, well it's been just over five minutes. I turned that pot ever so slightly and I'm dead on 120 volts now, DC. So this is looking good. All right, guys, well, clearly I'm back on the bench. When I'm out here working, I have computers on and fans running, and I shut my fans off when I shoot video clips, and my camera does not pick up the background noise that I hear. And when I was reviewing that last clip, I could hear a sizzling sound down in here. So I shut everything off, got in here in the quiet room, and I could hear a sizzle and I'd hear a snap every once in a while. I shut the lights off, got my head just right. And what's happening is I'm getting an arc from this ferrite core right here that is jumping this gap and it's grounding out to the chassis. It happens maybe every 10 seconds or so, but the sizzle's always there. I have about a sixteenth of an inch of an air gap. But I sent them an email saying what my issue was, thinking maybe I had a potentially bad part. And the response was to not use these screws on the side and make sure you seat the flyback firmly to the board. Apparently this is a common issue that I was unaware of. Now I'd mentioned earlier that the new flyback left a gap back here where those screws would go. So without stressing the board, I put the screws in first and then soldered my connections. If you had this firmly seated and then put your screws in and tighten them up, you can stress and break that board. So I went that way. Well, inevitably, that is what has closed this gap up. So based on their advice, I'm going to reseat this, trans, uh, this flyback transformer, leave those screws out, test and see where we're at and that should take care of this problem according to them all right guys I've reseated the flyback my air gap here is pretty much doubled I have just under an eighth inch now so hopefully that will be enough to eliminate that arcing issue I did stack up two of these really small washers and put them in that space and put the screws back in probably not required just my election. All right, well, here's another step that I failed to do before I put this in the first time. I keep calling these potentiometers. They're not. They're variable resistors, rheostat. They're two totally separate things. But when I was trying to adjust this before I discovered that arcing issue, these were a little scratchy, hard to turn. You try to turn it just a little bit and then it would jump too far. So I've lubricated and cleaned to them. And this is the proper type of spray to use, cleaner and lubricant. You don't want to use just contact cleaner because they need to be lubricated. So they've been shot down. I've worked them back and forth many times. They're nice and smooth now. All right, the chassis has been reinstalled. It's powered on right now. Reseating that flyback seems to have taken care of that arcing problem that I was having. Since I cleaned and lubricated those adjustments, everything was all out of whack. So I went ahead and took off the glass and this piece right here. You can see how dirty this is. I mean, I couldn't hardly see through it. 
but now I've got it to where I can actually start adjusting this. I did a little bit last night with my wife. That was the best way to do it. Once she kind of figured out what I was adjusting was doing, she said, ah, too far back up, you know, and it made it for a quick adjustment without having to use mirrors and things like that. Now, when I went to adjust the horizontal width, I was speaking this way, and I was turning and turning and turning and not seeing anything, but actually, this monitor's orientation is vertically in this sense, but the adjustments are this way. So this is your vertical, and this is your horizontal. Now, I did have a problem trying to shrink the screen with that new width coil. I was running out of space, and then it would start going back the other direction. Now, what I'm trying to do is align everything to these burn-in marks that are already in the monitor. I'm getting everything right back to where it was. The problem was the high score was too high, and when I'd pull it down, the credit would go down, and it just wasn't working out. And I'm going to show here momentarily what I did to correct it. Because the old coil worked just fine, new coil not so much. So with that being said, playing with these adjustments is kind of like a dance. A little bit on the vertical height, a little bit on the vertical hold to shift it back and forth. The horizontal frequency also acts like a horizontal hold. You can kind of go too far and it'll get crazy and come back the other direction. You can shift it a little bit. So it's a back and forth. It takes a while to do it, especially if you're trying to get it back to the where it was like I am. All right, when I was messing with the horizontal width coil adjustment last night, I could bring the screen down so far and then it would switch and go back the other direction. There was, there's only a finite amount of space where you can make an adjustment. I found an article online that stated if you change the value of the capacitor at C515 up or down, it would, in essence, change your range a little bit. If you needed to bring it a little further this way, then you could increase or decrease the value. I don't know which is which. And then you'd have that adjustment range that you could play with with this coil. It didn't really make sense to me because the only thing that changed that should affect this portion is the coil itself. So I started examining the old coil versus the new coil. And the ohms reading that I picked up measuring the coil itself, they're identical on both. So I took the core out, I call it a core, this threaded piece of ferrite right here, which is what you adjust that's inside of this hole to change that dimension. And I took the old one out. Well, the new one is just a single threaded piece. Let's say it's about a half inch long. The old one is made more like this. It's threaded to a point and then it's cut back, which that really doesn't matter, but it's cut back. That's the way it's shaped. The difference is the old versus the new is the old piece of ferrite is about that much longer. So I took the ferrite and installed it in this and that put my adjustment right back in range. I haven't finalized the adjustment because I'm using my wife to help me do it to make it easier and she's not out here yet. But that's just an FYI to people. If you're changing your horizontal width coil and you cannot bring that in, you may try to salvage your piece of ferrite out of your old one carefully try to get it out of there not using a metal tool use TV adjustment tools plastic tools try to get it out in one piece install it in the new one make your adjustments and you should be good to go and if it still doesn't work then you can entertain maybe trying to locate that article online and changing the value of that C15 C515 capacitor all right guys well it's been about a week since I actually finished dialing in the 
monitor getting everything cleaned up and put back together I probably shouldn't have fixed it in the first place because my wife and I have been battling it out on this thing having a blast so now I may have a difficult decision on whether or not I'm going to strip out the components and store it away for future use elsewhere but I do want to make clear on something and that's related to adjusting these monitors especially the horizontal width coil you really need to use a TV alignment set kind of like this find one somewhere do not stick a metal tool in that horizontal width coil like an allen key with it powered on especially because that thing will get blazing hot in addition to that that ferrite core in there they're super brittle and easy to break so you really need to use the right tool for the job or don't mess with it at all I've actually got some new old stock components for this like the marquee control panel overlay maybe even glass somewhere I just never got around to doing it the cabinet itself is in decent shape all in all I did find a problem since we've been playing it and that's related to the joystick that's going to be a separate video but long super long but thanks for watching guys and good luck